Hi guys, my name is Bobby, and welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be doing the worst books of 2018. Now, ranting and raving about books is something that I really enjoy doing, and I haven't really had a chance yet to do it yet on my channel, so I'm really excited to do this. Though, as I was looking through my list, I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, only eight books? Like, I actually had a really good reading year. I've read, what is my count up to? I think 80, 85-ish? Some are books that I've read this year. I might finish one or two more by the time the year is out. As I'm filming this, it's after Christmas, and we still got about a week left-ish, just under a week left-ish of the year. But I don't think I'm going to read any more duds this year. So most of these I read earlier in the year. Some I don't remember everything about, but I'm just happy that I don't have as many to rant about as I thought I was going to. But still, let's talk some trash about books. These are not going to really be in, in any particular order. I'm just kind of going to go with, you know, a lot of, I only own three of these still. I have yet to, one, for some reason, I don't know why it was not my unhaul, unhaul pile. The other two are in my unhaul pile to go far, far away. And once I get enough to do an actual unhaul, I will. But I only have three in physical copy. The rest I'm going to have to put images on the screen. So the first one I want to talk about is Let Me Lie by Claire McIntosh. This book was terrible. This was my first Claire McIntosh book that I've ever read. Um, I heard Books and Lala talk about it, and a couple other people talk about Claire McIntosh and how her books were really good. They were really good mystery thrillers. And so I was like, all right, well, I'll give it a shot. This book was terrible. It was so terrible. So the premise wasn't bad. It was about, like, I think it was this girl and her dad had died. Or is it her mom? Her dad had died previously or something, and then her mom also passed away, like, or something like that, like, and they said it was suicide, but she didn't believe that her mom would commit suicide, and, like, it was just kind of a convoluted plot, and then as it goes through, like, there's this mystery of somebody's harassing her, and stuff like that. Oh, I'm gonna break right here and say it, there's gonna be tons of spoilers for all of these books, so if you do not want spoilers in any of these books, like, this is a trash talk rant video, there's going to be spoilers. So anyways, back to that stupid story. So the she keeps getting harassed by somebody, like, you know, kind of trying to hint that maybe her mom's not really dead and maybe you don't know everything you thought to know may not actually be true and blah, blah, blah. So dumb. So the main character, first of all, is one of the most annoying characters I think I've ever read. All she would talk about is, oh my God, I miss my mom so much. If, she, if I had to hear her say that she missed her mom one more time or obsessed about something really stupid, that had to do with her family one more time, I was going to throw up. Like, okay, we get you miss your mom. That's the whole point of this book is that you're trying to figure out if she committed suicide or not. We get it. You don't need to keep shoving it down our throats that you miss her. It just further just proved that her mom wasn't really dead. And all of the shit that was happening was her mom was actually alive and was trying to communicate with her. And then there was this big convoluted plot about why her mom killed herself or faked her death. It was, it was so stupid. The whole book was dumb trash don't read it and the next book i actually have a physical copy to talk about that i thought sucked big time was the woman in the window by aj finn unpopular opinion this book was terrible like i do not understand why everybody loved it so much this book is freaking huge it is what 400 and something pages 430 427 it is one of the biggest books that i read this year well no i guess that's not true but it's one of the bigger ones but this book was terrible. I was so hyped for this. I was so excited for this. I'm like, okay, woman who has agoraphobia, who stays in her house all the time watching old movies and spies on her neighbors and she sees something she's not supposed to see. That sounds really interesting. It wasn't interesting. It was highly predictable. It was so predictable. It was so dumb. Like, and it, w it just dragged on forever. Nothing really happens until over halfway through. You're literally just reading about this woman who has agoraphobia and is just sitting in her house watching old movies like old like Hitchcock films and stuff like that looking out her window on occasion just sitting there doing nothing online oh yeah she's an online therapist so this is a therapist with agoraphobia which is kind of an oxymoron because you know a therapist would know how to treat or know what needed to be done to help get over their agoraphobia she just chooses not to do that but she'll help other people online deal with their issues even though she is you know an alcoholic and that's another thing why do all unreliable narrators have to be al alcoholics every single one girl on the train woman in the window there's so many and they're all female too like what the hell why do you have to have an unreliable na narrator have to be an alcoholic why can't they be an unreliable narrator just because either they're crazy or they're just 
a sociopath or they're just an asshole. Why do they have to be alcoholics? They all, it's, it's a trope that I fucking hate. Like, I can't, I, I can't. I can't stand it. It's stupid. The next book that I kind of read, it was actually a DNF that I considered one of the worst books. I think I only got like 50 pages in was, let me see, um, was Not That I Could Tell by Jessica Strasser. This was also one of my book of the month picks that was just terrible. I started reading it. The premise sounded really good. Like a whole bunch of women, they get together like once a week or in like in their combined like backyards, like they live in a neighborhood and run a campfire and they drink wine and all that and just talk about their lives and you know catch up or whatever and have kind of like a mom's night and because and then during that I think a kid goes missing or a husband and a kid goes missing or something stupid like that and why did they disappear and what's going oh no the next day a whole family goes to whatever something like that it was trying way too hard to be Big Little Lies and because I had read that one towards the beginning of the year and Big Little Lies are read towards the end of last year it was trying way too hard to be Big Little Lies and was not succeeding, so I DNF'd it. If you like Big Little Lies and, like, you want to give it a shot, go ahead, but it's it it's trying too hard to be something it's not. Big Little Lies was a way better novel. Like, this, no. It, no. Next on my list is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. I think I'm going to have to stop reading Riley Sager. Like, he sucks. Like, I did not like Final Girls. Also another unpopular opinion. Final Girls, I figured out, which is his first novel that came out last year, I figured out what the twist was on page 8. Page 8. Who figures out the twist of a thriller on page 8? Like, it, it was that predictable. I knew immediately what the twist was, who the killer was, immediately, and I was correct. I was absolutely correct. And in, and Riley Sager has an issue, like it was the same with Final Girls, and it was the same as um, The Last Time I Lied. Both, uh, bo he writes, it's a male author writing under a pseudonym, and both of his main characters in both of these books are females. He sucks at writing females. He makes all of his female characters, especially the main ones, totally annoying. They're like the annoying, stereotypical, woe is me college girl that's totally dumb and naive and has like no brain cells and makes the dumbest decisions for no reason whatsoever. I can't stand that. Like, why do, why do people have to do that? That's not how all women are, thanks. And with Last Time I Lied, this is a story about a girl who used to go to summer camp a long time ago. And the first and only time she went to summer camp, she was bunked with three other girls. Those three girls go missing. Um, one night while she's in bed, she sees them sneak off, but then they never come back. So she's kind of haunted by that memory and all that. And the owner of the summer camp had shut it down. She's now reopening it. It's been like 20 years later. She invites our main character to go back and be like a camp counselor and teach art or whatever. So of course she goes back because she's hoping to find out what happened to her friends. Spoiler alert, I also figured out the twist of the story pretty damn quick. It, it was not hard to figure out. It was a little bit harder to figure out than Final Girls. I will give it that. But I, it was just, uh, just wasn't good. Like it was boring. Like it was so boring and you have the stupid, naive, dumbass narrator and then when stuff finally happens, it was like, okay, well, cool, I guess. And like everybody's like, oh, that ending, that ending was just so perfect. That ending was dumb and predictable and, I'll, and who, I saw it coming. Like, did nobody else saw it coming? I think I might have to stop reading Riley Sager. I, part of me just wants to pick up his next one just so I can rant about it and trash it because both Final Girls and The Last Time I Lied, I think, were both two-star reads. They... No. If you can write a thriller where the, the reader picks up who the killer is on page eight, you're not, you, you need a new job. Like, it, no. The next worst book on my list, I'm kind of sad to say because it was a recommendation from Leanne over at Literary Diversions, and I feel really bad, but it's Dead Girls by Abigail Tartellin, and is that, yeah, Dead Girls. Um, I have already unhauled this. Um, I bought it on Book Depository. Like, I had to wait for it to be shipped from the UK. I don't even know if it's out yet in the United States. But this tells a story about a girl and her best friend, and it takes place in the 1990s um, in the UK, and her best, I can't remember the names of the characters. It's been forever, and I, I didn't like the book. But her best friend is murdered, and they are like nine, I think, nine or ten. They're really young, maybe even 11. They're, they're very young. And her best friend gets murdered. She's sexually assaulted and murdered. And she makes it her mission to find out the killer and get revenge for her best friend's death. So while that premise isn't that bad, and it's a pretty good premise, the execution was terrible. So major spoiler alert, the whole um, 
the beginning is kind of interesting as you're figuring out like how the family dynamics are set up with the entire town, how these girls' friendship are. That's kind of fun. And then her friend dies and, you know, it's really sad and all that. But then as it progresses on like how she's going to find out who the killer was, like I got so bored. Like you are 12, honey. You're 12. No 12 year old girl is going to be able to investigate and find out who killed her best friend. No 12 year old girl is going to be able to figure out who the killer is and then go and get revenge. You're 12, honey. I'm sorry. Like it was just. Ugh. So she finds out who the killer was or is. It's somebody in their town. It, I think it's like the teacher's husband I believe and he's a pedophile so at 12 13 years old the main character seduces the pedophile and then kills him okay that is so far-fetched what 12 year old girl would be able to seduce a pedophile I mean a pedophile would be down I mean it sounds terrible would be down to be with a 12 year old girl of course but what 12 year old has the brain power and the wherewithal to be like I'm going to seduce a, a, my this pedophile who killed my best friend just so I can get revenge. It, it's just not going to happen. It's not plausible. It would never fucking happen. Like, and it was just so unbelievable. I could not suspend my disbelief for that. Like, if she was an adult and then, like, had grown into adulthood and then, you know, okay, I could see that. But a 12-year-old kid? Sorry, don't believe it. And I feel really bad because, you know, Leanne re recommended it so highly and she loved it. It'll probably be one on her favorite books of the year list because she talks about it so much. But no. Like, I just found it too unbelievable for me. Last two. This should come as no surprise. I believe this was featured, both of these books were featured in, like, one of, I think it was an unhaul that I just haven't done yet. I'm not sure. Um, but they were featured, I think, in other videos. But Pieces of Her by Karen Slaughter. I am Karen Slaughter trash. I love her books. Like, I've read a lot of her Grant County series books. Pretty Girls is my favorite book by her. The Good Daughters also is a good book. This is her newest one. It came out this year, and it is terrible. I paid full price for this freaking book, and it was awful. It was so awful. Um, this deals with one of the tropes that I hate the most in literature, period, and it's the woman with no constitution, um, where the woman has the female protagonist is a sniveling, whining, crying, no self-preservation, no constitution. She needs everybody to do things for her. Bonus points if it's a man. And I just can't stand that. Like, grow a pair, you know, grow a pair of ovaries, girl. Like, you know, you can take care of yourself. You can figure shit out. And this whole story is her mom and her are in a restaurant in the mall. And this guy comes in and starts shooting people. And his mom stands up to him and ends up killing him herself while getting injured in the process. And this girl's like, oh my God, I don't know my mom at all. I don't know who she was. She was never this type of person. Spoiler alert, your mom was part of like a terrorist plot back in the 70s and she is this person. And oh, also double spoiler alert, your, your birth father, he is like the head terrorist and he's in jail for the rest of his life because he's a psycho manipulative sociopath. You're welcome. Um, that saved you the entire book. Like, and so her mom pretty much knows that she's going to be recognized on TV on the, in the news coverage of it because, you know, she's been in hiding and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, her daughter goes on this cross-country road trip, you know, to try to figure out who her mom really is. And it was so unremarkable. Like, I DNF'd it, and then I went to the end just to see if I missed anything. Nope, her daughter figured it out. And they, her mom went back to prison to convince her ex and the main character's birth father to admit more of what he did to put him away further because he was going to be up for parole and he does not need to be on the streets. It was dumb. It was so not Karen Slaughter. Like, I'm used to reading Karen Slaughter where it's like gross, brutal, gory, violent, you know, mystery thrillers like where, like Pretty Girls and like The Good Daughter where it's like hard hitting, fast paced. This was so fucking boring. I was so disappointed. She bet if when her next one that comes out, of course, I'll probably read it. But I just hope it's not this shit pile that this was. And the last book, which I don't even know if I can count this as the worst book of the year because I literally read only 50 pages of it. And that's The Stolen Marriage by Diane Chamberlain. This book is a dumpster fire with legs. It is, it embodies the woman with no constitution trope more than any book I've ever read. And it, oh, like, I don't even want to hold it. I mean, the the cover is beautiful. Like, it's got the um, textured, like, the rain that you see. It's textured on the cover, and it's really pretty. But it's a dumpster fire. It is such trash. It is 
this and it's historical fiction and it sounded really interesting about a woman who I think takes place in the 50s 40s 50s I think it's during like the Korean War maybe and like um there's a polio outbreak and she's supposed to be she was going to school to be a nurse and then she decided not to and she has to help in the town that she's in and blah 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 this is the women with no constitution trope and I just cannot stand it and it was right in the very beginning of the book She's been in love with her fiancé her entire life. They grew up next to each other. He's a doctor. He's at war being a doctor. And everything's great. She goes to a party with one of her friends, you know, just to get out of the house or whatever. So she does. And her drink is drugged, you know, with laudanum or something like that. And she wakes up the next morning naked in a bed next to a guy. She was raped. Date rape. Like, she did not. It wasn't a choice. You know, like, she was date raped. She was drugged. She didn't know what she was doing. It was not her choice. Um, I mean, it was her choice, but you know, like date rape where you're, you're like, oh, okay, whatever. Like the way it was described in the book, it wasn't like she was completely unconscious. Her mind was not functioning at a normal capacity, which is still fucking rape. And so she becomes pregnant. So instead of telling her fiance, I was drugged and raped and now I'm pregnant. She just assumes, well, I'm not going to tell him. So I'm going to assume that he's not going to want to marry me because now I am tainted and I'm instead going to marry my rapist. What the fuck? Like, who does that? No, that is not realistic. I don't care if it takes place in the 40s or 50s. A woman would not go and marry her rapist. And I mean, it's different. It's not even, it doesn't even make sense. Even if she knew the person really well and it was a family friend and somebody she knew well enough, maybe I could buy that she would marry her rapist only because she knows him. This dude, she doesn't know at all. She, do, she doesn't even fucking know him all. She met him that one night when she was drugged, so she doesn't even remember at all, but I'm going to marry him and go live with him because now that I'm pregnant with his baby through rape, but I'm not going to communicate with my fiance that I've been in love with since I was 10 years old. I'm not going to communicate with him and tell him what happened to me because he obviously will not want me. Nope. Done. I literally threw it across the room. Not going to finish it. I, I cannot stand that trope. I think it is terrible. It does a disservice to women. There is no logical woman that I know in my life who would be okay with that and go marry a rapist and not communicate what happened to her to her spouse. I know damn well that if I was raped and became pregnant and I told my husband I am I was raped, he's not going to be like, well, you're tainted now. I'm leaving you. I stopped loving you because you were violated. It just it makes me so angry. Like that would never freaking happen. Ever. Like, that book is trash. Absolute garbage trash. I rated it one star, even though I only read 50 pages, because that trope is one of the worst tropes that I absolutely hate in literature, and the second I see it, gone. I won't read it. Okay, guys, that's it. That is my ranty, you know, like, angry, worst books of the year. I hope you enjoyed it. I love making videos like this where I get to rant and rave about stuff that I just cannot stand. Please let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, what you thought, if you agreed with me, if you disagreed with me, I'm open to discussion, and I will see you guys later. Bye.